All right, so thank you for the introduction and uh, good afternoon. And so, uh, as Sahar mentioned, today I'll be presenting results from a study entitled The Risk of Hepatitis C Virus Reinfection or Late Relapse After Sustained Virological Response to Interferon Based Therapy in HIV Co Infected Canadians. So, to provide a little background, uh, due to shared routes of transmission and similar risk factors, hepatitis C virus co infection, or HCV for short, is prevalent among people living with HIV. Although estimates vary, as many as 25% of people living with HIV are believed to be chronically infected with HCV. In Canada, this amounts to somewhere between 13 and 15,000 Canadians who are living with both viruses. <laughs> um, as we know, direct acting anti antivirals, or DAs, are effective in treating HCV. Some of these benefits include a reduction in liver-related morbidity, premature mortality, and improved quality of life. Despite the success of DAs, however, there still exist barriers to HCV treatment among people living with HIV. These barriers include ongoing injection drug use, food security, housing, and, psychi and psychiatric issues. There is little data, however, on the risk of reinfection after successful HCV treatment. As a result, the objective of this study will be to describe rates and predictors of hepatitis C reinfection or late relapse after sustained virological response to HCV treatment in co-infected populations. So uh, data from this study comes from the Canadian Co-infection Cohort, or the CCC for short. The Co-infection Cohort is, the, is an ongoing multi-center prospective cohort study, which since 2003 has recruited over 1,500 co-infected patients from 18 study sites in six Canadian provinces. The cohort is representative of the co-infected population receiving care in Canada and contains a, and has recruited a large number of women, aboriginals, active injection drug users, and MSM populations. Um, the cohort has uh, study visits that are scheduled uh, biannually, and these visits provide demographic and substance abuse information that's provided uh, uh, directly from the, uh, from the subject. And uh, nurse, study nurses obtain, obtain lab measurements such as CD4 cell count, viral load, and qualitative or quantitative HCV RNA. So far, for our inclusion criteria, we included all patients who developed a sustained virological response and had at least one subsequent uh, follow-up visit. Um, all participants were followed from the time they uh, developed sustained virological response until they were reinfected, died, or lost the follow-up. Uh, for our outcome, we defined hepatitis C reinfection as a single positive HCV RNA, either qualitative or quantitative assay, after a confirmed sustained virological response. And for study covariates, we extracted uh, demographic, behavioral, and clinical variables. Some of these behavioral variables included current injection and non-injection drug use histories, uh, equipment sharing for said injection or non-injection drugs, and the frequency of condom use. Uh, for statistical analysis, we employed uh, the Kaplan-Meier method to estimate the cumulative risk of HCV reinfection or late relapse. And we also used time-updated Cox proportional hazards models to calculate hazard ratios for, reinfe for reinfection risk factors. So now we'll go over our study results. So this shows our study participant flowchart. I won't go through it in great detail, but I just wanted to highlight that of the 1,552 patients who were in, uh, participants who were enrolled in the co-infection cohort, we only included 176, so this was roughly 12%. So these were those who developed a sustained virological response and had sufficient follow-up time. So this table shows our baseline study characteristics. I'll just highlight a few key points. So for the most part, the court uh, consisted of mostly um, uh, Canadian-born middle-aged men. So the uh, median age was 47 years and 84% were male. 71%, um, not surprisingly, had a history of injection drug use. But what was more interesting was that 29% were active injection drug users, meaning that they used injection drugs at least once after establishing a sustained virological response. Um, for the most part, 55% were treated, who were initially treated were treated for genotype 1. And the median time between, uh, the estimated median time between uh, HCV infection and treatment was approximately 18 years. Uh, and our median follow-up time was 2.1 years with an interquartile range between 1 and 3.3 years. So this figure shows uh, the risk of reinfection or late relapse as a function of time since developing sustained virological response. We estimated through the Kaplan-Meier method that the five-year cumulative risk of reinfection was 21%, with a 95% confidence interval between 13 and 34%. And if we calculate the overall incidence rate, we identified 18 uh, reinfection or late relapse events. So those are all the little steps that you see on, on the graph over a total of 443 person years of follow-up. So this yields uh, an incidence rate of reinfection of 4.1 per 100 person years of follow-up. 
Um, so this final table shows, uh, it's a bit busy, but it shows the hazard ratios for uh, reinfection or uh, it shows the hazard ratios for the risk factors for HCV reinfection. So I'll just highlight a few of the key points here. So it, in the univariate model, there was no association between any of the demographic variables and the reinfection. Uh, patients who are who were on stable antiretroviral therapy actually were at a reduced risk of being reinfected, so the reduction was 70%. Um, for the injection drug use variables, these were the ones that showed the highest, the strong association with reinfection, so the risk of reinfection range, the relative risk of reinfection range between three and eight. And when we put the variables that were, we, we deemed were important in the univariate model into an adjusted model, we found that injection drug use remained a strong predictor of reinfection, so the hazard ratio was 3.4, so this tells us that Injection drug users had a rate of reinfection that was uh, three times higher uh, than those who were not using, not using injection drugs. And when we restricted the model to those who had a history of uh, MSM uh, behavior, so this is a, a much smaller sample, uh, we, find, we found that the effect of injection drug use remains uh, significant, although with the smaller sample size, inference remains uh, more difficult to make. So um, in conclusion, we found that hepatitis C reinfection or late relapse was common after, was common after s developing a sustained virological response. We estimated that the rate of reinfection was 4.1 per 100 years of follow-up. Um, the incidence of hepatitis C reinfection was dependent on ongoing high-risk behavior, namely injection drug use. Uh, we observed rates of reinfection that were similar to other HIV cohorts. So for example, uh, Jurgen Rockstro's group at Eurocedar reported a cumulative incidence of reinfection of approximately 19%. And more recently, uh, the Spanish co-infection court reported um, amongst, a, amongst a cohort of active injection drug users that the, that the rate of reinfection was approximately 8 per 100, uh, 8, 8 per 100 person years. Um, and these findings highlight the importance of pairing treatment with broader harm reduction strategies to, to uh, get more of a possibility that the cure that you receive from DEA is dur durable and, and remains, uh, remains a cure remains a cure after the end of treatment. And up to this point, we've grouped together late infection, uh, late relapse and reinfection because at this point we're still not able to distinguish between the two. So we're hoping that we are planning to do future work uh, to, to perform deep gene sequencing on the hepatitis C isolates to be able to determine if they were actually reinfections and not late relapses. So before uh, heading out for lunch, I just wanted to acknowledge all the people who made the study possible. So all the study site investigators, the study nurses, and the site coordinators, and as well, all the patients who without their help, we wouldn't be able to make this uh, advance our uh, the science of hepatitis C forward. So thank you.